Welcome to the Redis Crash Course. In this video, I will walk you through the fundamentals of Redis, its advantages and the supported data types, um, everything basically that you need to know. Plus, I will show you how to install it on your system and how to get it running. And the last thing that I'm going to show you is some of the useful commands of Redis. Not everything, of course, but some of these useful commands that might get you um, more intrigued and learn more uh, of these commands um, in the Redis documentation files. So Redis was developed by the Redis Labs and it was um, released in 2009. And what Redis stands for is Remote Dictionary Server. Okay, so what is Redis? Um, it's an open source in-memory project that functions as a non-relational database. Okay. So it doesn't work like the other RDBMS or uh, relational database management systems when you want to design your database, for example, in uh, SQL, let's say. Uh, what you do, you define the purpose of your database, you gather data, you organize tables, you specify primary keys, foreign keys, what data types are uh, attributed to each field or each row. You don't do that here. And it also supports uh, various data structures. So all the data structures or data types that you can think of, Redis supports them. So the structure of the database in Redis is more of a key value pair. Okay, so the simple key value structure uh, enables high performance as well as rapid processing of large amounts of data. And all data types that you can think of, as I said, are included like um, strings, hashes, lists, uh, hyperlog logs, bitmaps, all of that. Okay. In terms of speed, um, it has high speed in read and write operations, which ensures the efficiency. It's super fast because basically all these key value pairs, uh, which constitutes your database in Redis, basically stored in the RAM or the random access memory. So your processing unit um, grabs very quickly this data, retrieves them and display them uh, on demand. Also Redis is the most popular key value database. So uh, it has been ranked the fourth no SQL or not only SQL database in user satisfaction and market presence. So it's more like MongoDB, but also it has these uh, key value pair structures. So Redis is written in NC and C languages, and this is the list of the supported languages by Redis. Okay, uh, this is the last update for 2021. ActionScript, C, C++, C Sharp, um, Node.js, all right, uh, Lua, Haskell, Go. You get some um, iOS languages such as Objective C, Swift, all right. You get Python, PHP, all the languages that basically you can think of, um, you will find them um, in the supported languages list here. So some of the great features of Redis, it offers memory efficiency, uh, also fast operating speed, um, high availability, and it provides some features like replication and clustering. Okay, so let's jump in and install Redis and let's go to redis.io forward slash download. You will get this in your browser. This is the last stable version. You can also install for Docker Hub and you get a free for life for this instance with Redis Cloud. And if you're working on Windows operating system like me, uh, you might want to check um, github.com uh, forward slash Microsoft Archive slash Redis. Okay. And just scroll down and you'll find Redis on Windows. Okay. This is a port for Windows based on Redis and go ahead to the release page. So in the release page, you'll find down here below an MSI file. So click on the MSI file to download. So go ahead and uh, open the folder in downloads. So you might want to download that. I already have installed it on the system, so I won't do it again, but it's fairly easy basically uh, just click next, 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 and then you will have a folder with uh, a bunch of files, all right? And it will look like this. This is the folder that uh, you will get after installation. So what you're interested in is um, all computers now are 64X, uh, basically. So click, double click on that, 
All right, so what we're interested in is Redis Server and Redis CLI. If you will double click on Redis Server, you will get your server running. So just leave the server open and go back to your folder. Okay, and double click on Redis. So this is Redis Server and this is Redis CLI or client. These are the main two files that you are interested in. The server is being working uh, in the background and Redis client, this is it. One is for the server, which is working, and the CLI. And if you want to test if Redis system is working, just type ping, and you will get a response pong, which means that the connection has been established successfully. And you see here accepted, and this is the local host 31687. Okay. So we don't want every time to open the folder and run the files separately. We need to set the environment variables, okay, and add them to the path. So uh, you need to get your path here and you need to copy it, all right, and close that. Let's close both of them. This PC and go to properties and go to advanced system settings, okay. You'll get this window and in environment variables, all right, go to path right here and click on edit and you might want to create a new path all right so the path that we have copied where is your redis folder is located you paste the path here like that okay but i won't do it again already as you can see uh, i have it here see back brace redis and this is the path that uh, my initial folder is located all right so once you do that, you just click OK, OK, and OK, and close that one, close this one, and go to your terminal or uh, your command prompt, and type Redis uh, hyphen server, and this is one window working perfectly, and we'll open the second window, and we'll type here Redis hyphen CLI or client and it will be working as well all right so we have now both windows are working the server and the client and we're going to spend uh, the rest of this crash course time in uh, the Redis client terminal okay so let me actually open the documentation let's actually type Redis uh, data types okay so data types Redis Okay, so this is the main page for data types. As you can see, strings, lists, sets, hashes, sorted sets, bitmaps, and hyperlog logs. All right. Okay, so as I showed you, uh, if you will type ping here and get pong as a response, we can also print a statement or uh, echoing it. So uh, type echo command followed by the statement that you want to print. It's like echo in PHP or print uh, in Python or console log in uh, JavaScript, for example. So let's say Happy New Year. And you get Happy New Year displayed. Okay. We can also set a key value pair. So uh, say set name back get OK and if you want to display the value of that key uh, we can get name and you get back right pretty simple you can also set any data type for example set number let's say 100 uh, I type number wrong uh, so del number okay let's set number to 100 okay now get number we get 100 all right uh, you can also increment numbers so we have uh, 100 as a number so let's increment that by one usually when you type um, incur command it increments the number that you want to increment only by one okay so incur number so you get 101 now 
if you get number again so you'll find that it indeed has been incremented by one uh, you can do the opposite I mean you can decrement it so you can type DECR short for decrement uh, the opposite of increment and we want to decrement number and automatically it will decrement it by one then uh, get number and you will find that it has been returned to one again um, you can also check out if a certain key value pair exists so you can type exists name and you get affirmative one um, so sometimes you will find it one sometimes you will find zero all right one is affirmative which means exists for example in this case if you get zero uh, that means that negative it doesn't exist you can also delete a key value pair so you can do it by um, typing del and followed by the key so let's delete name okay uh, again one means affirmative that um, the transaction was done successfully so let's check if um, name exists or not zero which means doesn't exist and if we'll try to get the name you'll get nil which means nothing there is nothing if you want to delete everything you can use the command flush all and this will basically um, deletes all the key value pairs in the database all right so flush all enter and all has been deleted you can find here in the in the server DB saved on disk all right so flushed from the memory but saved on the disk and it took 1.03 seconds um, you can also set values to expire in a certain point so uh, let's set name for a city for example let's say um, city New York so if you want New York or um, that value to expire we can type the command expire right so we can type expire followed by the name of the key or the key itself and followed by the number of seconds okay so let's say 30 seconds so in 30 seconds the city or New York will expire will be no longer valid all right so we hit enter and if we want to check the remaining seconds we can type TTL city you see 24 21 so it's counting down basically until it will um, be zero so let's wait for a few seconds 10 7 4 2 0 all right and then minus one okay meaning that it's expired already you no longer have access to that value all right so if you want to set the value and the expiration in the same time um, the command for that will be set x or set expiration let's say for instance weather for um, 140 seconds and the value for weather let's say cloudy all right okay and if we want to check out the remaining seconds for weather let's say TTL weather okay so it's counting down you can see if we'll do that again 127 and so on now if you want to stop at a certain point where you don't wish um, the value to expire you can use persist command so you can say persist persist followed by the name of the key which is weather and hit enter so you get one which means that uh, we have stopped cloudy from being expired okay so it's always valid and if we will try to check out um, exists weather we'll find that one means that exists and get weather we'll find cloudy now if you want to set more than uh, one key value pair we can do that um, usually you do set for one key only or one key value pair only but for multiple key value pairs you do M set okay and let's say country France and the second key value pair will be let's say um, capital Paris 
enter okay so let's get country you'll find France get city you'll get nil yeah indeed I wanted to say capital get capital Paris okay and it's just a common convention that we use get and set and all the commands in capital but it's not necessary so to prove it to you let's uh, type set in small letters car to BMW but you can type it without um, these um, double quotes okay so set car BMW okay now get car and you get BMW you can also append to a certain value so you can do append country so I want to append to the key country which has a value of France so what I will append next will be added to France to the value and let's say is beautiful enter and now let's check out um, country we get France is beautiful so this is how to append to a value of a certain key we can also rename keys so uh, country for example capital let's rename country so uh, the command for that will be rename followed by the name of the key that we want to change which is country then the name of uh, the new key okay so we will change from country to home all right so if you will check out uh, country now exists country you'll find that it's zero and if you'll try to get country you'll find that it's nil because it's uh, it doesn't exist anymore um, but home has replaced country so let's get home and we get France is beautiful and all this actually is in the documentation okay so you can spend more time reading you can see here uh, append uh, get range incur decur and you can spend more time actually uh, reading uh, the commands the different data types all right so let's minimize that let's take a look to other data types uh, again in the documentation redis lists are simply lists of strings sorted by insertion order and uh, we will check out the l push and the r push okay so l push key element let's explore um, some of that so let's create a set we'll call it fruits you have two commands for that you have l push and you have r push l push basically pushes it from the left side so you have a list and in the list you push it from the left side r push you put you push it from the right side okay and just memorize that l push is the head and r push is the tail of the list and I will show you that in a second let's call it fruits and uh, it will have first element of apples so this actually adds a list called fruits with one value which is apples if we want to add a second fruit uh, let's say oranges for example let's say l push in fruits list we'll add oranges and let's add the third fruit uh, peers okay so we have a list called fruits with three elements apples oranges and peers in order to uh, output fruits list so what we'll do is we'll type l range fruits list from zero because it's a zero based system and to display everything in that list we will go from zero through minus one and hit enter you get peers oranges and apples so in that list you get peers as the head okay oranges and apples and apples is the tail so the last element actually we have entered in the list it will appear in the head let me demonstrate uh, using r push and we will add uh, let's say watermelon okay and let's output again and there you go you get watermelon as the last element so as I told you R push is the tail and L push is the head when you use L push to insert a certain element in the list 
when you will display the list, you will find that element is um, the first one. All right. And when you will use R push, you'll find it at the bottom of that list or the tail of that list. So if you want to get the range, for example, of the first two, so we'll say L range fruits from zero to one, and we'll get the first two elements, pears and oranges. From zero to two, you will get pears, oranges and apples because we're not sure how many items this list contains. So what you will do is minus one to display everything in that list. If you want to get the length of the list elements, for example, you can use the command LLEN fruits and you get four elements. Okay. If you want to remove an item, uh, you can use LPOP command. So let's say LPOP fruits and this will delete the items from the head or from the left of the list. Okay. And indeed it has uh, dropped or deleted the first element here, which is peers. So let's uh, display again fruits. We'll find that um, peers has been deleted. So you can say R pop, R pop fruits. And exactly watermelon is um, the item that we wanted to delete because it's from the right side or um, the tail of that list. And again, if we will output the fruits list, we will get oranges and apples only. Right. Uh, let's say I want to insert another fruit between oranges and apples. So it will be before apples. Uh, the command for that is L insert followed by the name of the list, which is fruits. Then where I want to insert is the location. So it will be before, let's say before apples, or you can use after oranges. It doesn't matter. And I will show you both. So before apples, I want to insert, let's say, kiwi. Okay, now let's check out again. I'll range fruits from zero to minus one. And indeed we have kiwi inserted between apples and oranges. Um, just to show you that I want, I can do it uh, the other way. So in, uh, I'll insert fruits after, after oranges and let's insert bananas. Okay, so um, let's check out again the fruits list. So indeed you have bananas after oranges and this is the order that we want our list to be. Okay, so we have seen strings, we have seen lists. Let's flush all. Okay, and let's check out sets now. And sets are an unordered collection of strings. And I will show you some of the commands for um, sets. And the first command that you need to know in sets is sad. All right. So let's have a set called um, sports set. And inside that set, we'll have football. Okay. Or soccer for North America. So now we have established a set called sports set and it has only one value, which is football. Um, let's do the same and add different uh, sports. Let's say tennis and table tennis. All right. So to check out if there is uh, one element in the set or if it exists in your set already, you can type the command sysmember. So sysmember sports set followed by football, for example, to check out if football exists in your set or not. Oh, I mistyped sports set. So, okay, you get one, which is affirmative for um, the existence of football in your sports set. To verify the number of the items in your set, you can use S card followed by the name of your set sports set and you get three items indeed we have football tennis and table tennis to display the items in your set you can type the command s members sports set and you get football tennis and table tennis all right um, let's say that we want to move an item from one set to another all right 
So what we want to move, let's say, is football from sport set to another set. So let's do that by typing S move followed by your initial set, which is already defined sport set follows that is the name of the new set which is not yet created so let's say sport set 2 and the last thing we need to type is the name of the item that you want to move which is football enter okay now if you will s members uh, sports set 1 or sports set and get tennis and table tennis only and um, if you will s members sports set 2 you get football this is how to move one item from a set to another set. You can also do S union, which uh, returns the members of the set resulting from the union of all of your sets. So let's actually create a key one, which will be equal to A. And let's add B and let's add C. Okay, so we have key one. It has A, B and C. All right, key one set has these three values. Let's now create a second set, which will have um, C. D and E. Okay, now if you will type S union command, key one and key two, you will get C as the first item because this is the union item between both sets. Okay, you get DE and AB. Okay, so I hope you find this crash course useful to you guys and I uh, encourage you to learn more about Redis. It's a great no SQL database system and it's really fast and scalable and it's definitely worth learning. The first time that I knew about Redis was in um, a Russian company in Moscow. They were asking if uh, the candidates know about Redis or not. At the time I didn't know about Redis, but um, the more that I got into it, the more that I really liked it as a NoSQL database. All right. So thank you very much, guys. I hope you like this video and I will see you in the next crash course. Take care.